church. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Radiant. Are you ready to worship Jesus this morning? Come on, let's give him praise. Sing this out. Hey. Every voice is sing. I just want to set on you. You made the road in the wild. Standing on ancient truth. I'm pressing on with my back to the passing. Oh, let me unsee visions of the future, and I say, oh, let me all dream dreams again in my way.
believe that I worship you it's working in this room I worship you come on sing this out you are here you're moving in our man I worship you I worship you yes, you all are here you're working in this place I worship you, I worship you, sing this out, you are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, yes you are, you are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, you are.
How many believe that he is our way maker, our healer, our provider? Well, we declare that's who you are, Lord. There's no one like you, Father. That is who you are, that is who you are, that is who you are, Lord. Yeah. Oh, have love. Yes. Yes. Must sing this with me, even I don't see. Even when I don't see your work, even when I don't feel your work, yeah. you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working Come on, we're going to sing this over our lives Over our families, over our situations We're going to believe this, we're going to prophesy this Over our lives this morning Church, sing this out. Sing it again. Waymaker, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, it's who you are. You are waymaker, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. Light. Come on, sing even when. Even when, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop, yeah. You never stop, you must sing it out. Even when I don't see it,
seems to be no other way you make a way and we rejoice in that that you are the God of the impossible you make all things possible through Christ Jesus our Lord so that's the promise that we stand on this morning that if we put our trust our trust in you Jesus things will come around things will happen Lord we believe that that for 2020 for this year Lord we stand on your promises we will not stop believing that you will redeem, that you will bring uh, the people that are away from you. Maybe some of you guys are, are missing siblings in the kingdom and you're, and you're praying them back. Amen? How many out there are praying for your siblings to come back to the kingdom, to come back to Christ? Don't stop believing. He will bring that to happen. He will make it happen. He will make a way. All you got to do is just put, put them before Christ, before him. So that's what we do, Father. Whatever it is, whatever it is, the situation, we just say you have control. You reign over that. Not our minds, not our stress, not our anxiety, but you, Father. We release, we release that to you in Jesus' name. Because we know that when we don't see it, when we don't feel it, you are still working. You are working in the background. Even when we can't feel it or see it, you are there. And we honor and worship you for that. And we thank you for you're a faithful, faithful Father, great God, worthy to be praised, worthy to be honored. In Jesus' name. Come on, church, let's give him praise this morning. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. Thank you, Father. You're worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome to Radiant. If you're new, we welcome you. And if you are a continuing guest, thank you so much for coming. If you're a member, thank you for joining us again. Man, it's, it's so good to be in the house of God. Amen? Amen. If you could do me a favor, please just turn around for a moment. Greet somebody you don't know and then you may be seated. Thank you. What up, Radiant Church? I am Pastor Amy Jo, and I have something very exciting to share. If you're a high school graduate and under the age of 30, a new group is calling your name. Sub 30 is a brand new young adult ministry that is geared towards you 100%. Sub 30 will be meeting every Thursday night and you are invited. Bring your friends and an empty stomach and be ready to have tons of fun and expect to win some prizes. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to stop by the Welcome Center. We can't wait to see you there. All right. Good morning. Man, it feels like fusion up in here. I said it feels like fusion today. Come on, somebody say amen. That's a good way to start the year. I want to wish you all a, a, a happy new year. I haven't seen you since last year. Pero feliz año nuevo a todos ustedes. God bless you all. We are so excited for 2020. Thank you, brother. I said we are so excited for 2020. Hey, Amen, somebody. Turn to somebody, give them a high five and say, this is your year. This is your year. 
Now, don't say to gain weight or to lose your teeth. Say this is your year to, to prosper, to be blessed. We are glad that you're with us today. If you're a first time, second time, third time guest, uh, we welcome you to Radiant Church. Come on, can we welcome all those people today that are, that are visiting, checking out the church. This is how we worship. One of our core values is worship, and we love to worship God, and obviously you've done a great job today. But if you're new here and you want to get plugged in, this year we want you to get connected. If you, we want you to take next steps. Somebody say next steps. Take next steps this year. 2020 is a year for your family, your marriage, your home, your family, your kids, your, even for your mother-in-law to get better. Come on, somebody say amen. So this year is a year of taking next steps. So if you're new, get plugged in. In front of you, there's a card. Fill it out. Put your name on there or as much information as you feel comfortable with. And turn it in on the way out. We have a welcome center to the left here. And uh, just give, we got a gift for you. If you turn in that information, we want to know who you are and, and, and want to get you plugged in and in the right track. So on the way out, turn that, turn that into the Welcome Center, and uh, we got a gift for you. Also, we have connection groups going on this Wednesday. If you need to, to get connected or want to get connected or you want to grow, and this is the year you say, I'm going to get connected, we have a booth out there to the left next to the cafe that has all the information about connection groups starting this Wednesday and how you can get plugged in. Amen, somebody? Also, every, every Sunday at 9 a.m., we have the Ascent. You say, what's my next step? I'm new here. Get plugged into the Ascent. Know what we're about. Know about what the vision of a church is. The Ascent is for you in the Alpine Room upstairs every Sunday at what time? 9 o'clock. Okay, so um, we encourage you just to get, to get plugged into a great church. This is a great church, somebody. Say amen to that. This is a great church, and so we're glad that you're with us here today. Our ushers are going to make their way up this way. And we're going to get ready to pick up our tithes and offerings. As we get ready to hear the word from our pastors today. This is Vision Sunday. You want to pay attention. You want to know where we're going. This is, you're, you're, you're at the best place you can be to find out what's happening here at Radiant Church. And so our pastors got a great word for us, both of our pastors. Pastor Todd and Pastor Fuego, I call Pastor Kelly. She, she, was, she was preaching it at 9 o'clock, man. She was raising the dead at 9 o'clock. Come on, somebody. So anyways, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for being faithful with your tithes and offerings and giving unto God, being good stewards of, of, of what God has given you. We have the text giving. It's a new, we put this up last week. But if you give online or you give text to give, there's a new number, 84321. Okay, don't get it confused with the Spanish, 84321. <laughs> that's our Spanish text. So anyways, that's the new text to give. So to be faithful, you want God to bless your life, be good stewards of what he promises in his word. Amen, somebody? He promises to take care of you and your family. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We love you. We know you're making a way, way maker. What a great song. What a great, uh, just a great song to enter in today, just believing that even though we don't see things happening, maybe 2019 wasn't exactly how we expected, but 2020 is here. Clear vision is here. A new year is here. We're going to see and do greater things for your kingdom. So we thank you for all the brothers and sisters that are faithfully giving to you and, and, and sowing into this church and believing in this ministry. And so we ask that you will bless them with a double portion of your spirit, God. A double portion over their house, their household, their family, their lives, their ministry, their calling, what their purpose is, Father. We pray that you will bless them abundantly. In the name of Jesus, we ask you and we thank you. And now we get ready for the word of God. Prepare our hearts and we give you all the honor and glory. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Good morning, Radiant Church. And I want to particularly welcome those who are watching online and those at all of our campuses. So good to have you with us today. Let's give them a big hand as we get started here. At the beginning of every year, we like to begin by looking at what God has for us in the year ahead and to remind ourselves of our mission and vision. And that's what we're going to be doing today. And I get to say something I've been wanting to say for a really long time, and years and years, I've been wanting to say this. Today is our 2020 vision. 2020, 
I mean, come on, that's, that's good stuff. And this is the only year I'll ever get to say that. It's 2020 vision. So we're going to be talking about where God is taking us and who we are, and we're going to be looking at that today. And if you have been at Radiant long, you know that we are called to honor God by growing a community of passionate followers of Jesus Christ who impact our world. And really, that's essentially what every church should be doing. Because that's the great commandment of Jesus and the great commission of Jesus. We are called to do those things. And we have divided it into four quadrants or four ways of looking at it. Four, you could say, steps that we're to take or four areas of our life, four areas of our church. And the first one is worship. We're to worship God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. And then connect Connect. We are connecting with one another in biblical community. We're to love one another as we love ourselves, And then to grow. We're all called on to grow in our relationship with God. We're to become more and more like Jesus, more like him in our character, more like him in our conduct. We're to become more like Christ and then impact. We're not to keep it to ourselves. We're to make an impact in our world. And as I said, I believe every church has that kind of calling. Uh, I don't know that every church is fulfilling that. There's so many good churches in our nation. There's so many good churches here in Colorado Springs. At Radiant Church, we believe, though, that the church itself is the hope for our world and the hope for our nation. And our nation needs hope because our nation is not in a very good time. I mean, in some ways, it's doing great. I mean, financially, uh, economically, this is the biggest boom time I can remember in my own entire life. However, I think of Romans chapter 1, and I feel like Romans chapter 1 is a picture of where America is right now, that they have decided to throw off the truth, to throw off the truth, and instead to believe a lie or believe the lie. And to throw off God and decide to go our own way. And to worship created things rather than the creator. And that's the time in which we live. And so because of that, there's tremendous spiritual darkness in our land. And there is incredible moral confusion. It's absolutely extraordinary. I hear something new every day that absolutely blows my mind of the state of our nation. And I do believe the church is the one that will make the difference. But not just any church. You see, there's too many churches that are focused on simply fitting in and being like the world, but we're not called to simply produce carnal, casual, compromising Christians, but we're to grow a community of passionate followers of Jesus Christ, and we're the kind of church, and there's many of us out there who are going to make a difference and impact this world as we continue to pursue God, and we preach his word in an uncompromising way, and we see people having encounters with the living Jesus Christ these life-changing experiences. And so Radiant Church is called to do that. And we can't just continue where we're at. We have got to press in harder. You know, in past years, there were times in this service, some of you were here, where this service was so packed, there was no room really for anyone else. Our parking lot was jammed. And we had the same thing at our 945 service at our North Campus. And so what we did is we began to multiply venues. We now have seven different venues, seven different opportunities for worship services on a weekend at Radiant Church. We have three up at our North Campus. And if you don't know, if you're new to Radiant, we're one church, but we have three locations. Our North Campus currently has three services, a Saturday night, two Sunday morning. We have two Sunday morning here. Plus, we have a Spanish ministry that has a service, and that's not even including the deaf ministry we have that are having services right now. Then we have another campus up in Woodland Park. So our initial goal is we we need to fill these campuses again, but not just to fill them to fill them, but to fill them to begin to raise up leaders and pastors and worship leaders and, and to multiply what we're doing to make a bigger impact in our world. Now, our long-term vision here in Colorado Springs itself is to have two primary broadcast campuses. That is, where you have a live speaker every other week speaking. And we started to do that because that's our long-term vision, but we ran into some issues. One of those issues was simply technology. We could not produce the quality of video at our North Campus that needed to be broadcast here at our Central. Even though we have incredible broadcast capability here, the video wasn't the quality. 
But technology has changed and it's gotten better. And we're in the process of purchasing another camera for our North Campus. We've added lighting up there that we can produce a really quality video. In addition, we recognize something. We have a North Campus pastor in Mark Alexander. We have a Woodland Park pastor in Dustin Guthrie. But we've not had a central campus pastor. Kelly and I have kind of filled that role. But I have an exciting announcement today. We have named a central campus pastor. His focus will be feeding, leading, protecting, correcting, and ministering to this congregation and loving you. And he already loves you. And you know him. And his name is Tommy Dunn. Is Tommy in the audience here? Is Tommy here? I don't know where Tommy is. He's such a little guy. He's hard to see. But he's here somewhere. Uh, But anyway, he's probably out in the foyer because he's over all of our ushers right now, and he's been doing that ministry. He's also raised up uh, men's groups called Mighty Men of Valor. How many men, Mighty Men of Valor do we have here? I mean, we have some men who are so passionate, so on fire for Jesus, and he has led those groups uh, along with some others in this church, but he's proven himself as a leader, so he's going to be stepping into that role as our central campus pastor. So because of that, Probably beginning sometime in February, we're going to start going back and forth again where I am or whoever the speaker is, is live one week here, probably the first and third Sunday, and then live at our uh, uh, North Campus uh, the second and fourth Sunday. And the quality we have for broadcast now is absolutely extraordinary. But this is going to allow us to increase our impact as we're going to actually be expanding our North Campus. Now, a lot of you this last year were involved in our Kingdom Impact Initiative. And the initiative was to make improvements to the central campus and to expand our North Campus. Because we want two almost identical facilities and campuses here at Central and there at North. You know, we don't think that buildings are the end of what we're about at all. In fact, our facilities simply are to be utilitarian. Uh, They are to accomplish as a tool what we need to do to reach more people for Christ. But we are expanding that North Campus. We have a a campus that research empowers. And you can see up on the screens what that's going to be looking like. We're going to build out the whole thing. And then later, we're going to finish it up. It just was more um, cost-effective and economical to build the whole thing and then later finish the rest of the buildings. It's going to start with a 500-seat auditorium, and then it's going to expand to a 900-seat auditorium eventually. Uh, But there is an amazing mission field up in uh, northeast Colorado Springs. There are so many people moving into that area, and this is going to give us that opportunity to reach them. And so let me, let me say what happened last year is we received $1.7 million in commitments toward this project. And uh, so far, we have over 900, I believe it's uh, $927,000 that have been committed so far. And that's just a little over the first year of the three-year campaign. So thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your giving. We also own some land we purchased uh, back in 2008, way out uh, in the uh, east, uh, northeast part of Colorado Springs at Woodman and Black Forest Road. And it's um, about nine acres of land. We have just closed, and they're building on two acres of that land. A Circle K is going up out there right now. And the expectation is, the estimate is, that we can uh, raise between $3 million and $3.5 million in selling that land. And that will go toward the money that's given. Because this project, you guys have any idea how the costs have gone up to build here in Colorado Springs? It's been about 1% a month is how much it's gone up. So this has gone from a $6.5 million project to a $7.5 million project. But it's so critical we get this done. We have set some dates. And here's, here's what you battle with in Colorado Springs. Not just having the money to build. Uh, And we're building at the speed of God's provision, and God has been providing. But in addition, the weather. You know, when we lived in Texas, when we lived in California, uh, you could just kind of start a building anytime you wanted. Here you got to wait for the weather and the ground to thaw. And so we're looking right now to start breaking ground in June of 2021. So this June, a year from then, is when we're planning to break ground. If the monies come in and the weather cooperates, we may start earlier, but that's the current plan. But that's exciting. All the people we're going to be able to reach for Christ 
through that new facility. And here at the central campus, we've already begun some significant reno renovations. And I want to thank Josh Starnes and his team. Josh is our facilities manager. They're doing a lot of the work themselves to save money. But we're going to be doing a major renovation of this entire campus during this year because it's been over a decade since we last did anything like that. And uh, you can go in and look at our prayer room or our family room. We've started in there. They're not done yet, but we've started. And slowly over time during this next year, we're going to make some major renovations uh, because we just need to keep and maintain and be good stewards of the facility that God has already given us. So those are just some of the things that we're preparing to do as far as buildings and that sort of thing that, that happens and some of the changes we're making with our services. But what I really want to focus on today is our mission of honoring God by growing a community of passionate followers of Jesus Christ to impact our world. And what are the four quadrants again there? What? Worship, connect, grow, and impact. So we're going to talk about those four areas today, and I want to start by talking about worship. And you see, this is a progression. You could put it this way. Those four areas are things we can do to become passionate followers of Christ. They're a track to get there. So we begin the week in worship. We belong together in a connect group. We become passionate followers of Christ by growing. And then we are the church. We become the church. We be the church that impacts our world. And so let's begin the week in worship. Hebrews 10.25 uh, from uh, the author of Hebrews says, We're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another... And so much the more as you see the day approaching. One of the things that you guys obviously are good at, so you can kind of congratulate, and, and uh, I get to congratulate you for doing it, is being in church on a regular basis, being in a worship service on a regular basis. You know, we live in an era where there's this live streaming that happens. Right now we're streaming our services and many people are watching out there. But it's just not the same thing of gathering together. There's something very powerful about gathering together, realizing you're not alone, encouraging one another, being together in a group worship setting like this where you can really experience the presence of God. I mean, I sense the presence of God in this place today, and we need that. It's been shown that fewer and fewer people attend worship services on a regular weekly basis. It's now more like one to two times a month, and really, that's not going to get you where you need to be. You need to be part of a regular worship gathering. And for some of you, that's your next step, just to get consistent to be here. You know, your family needs it, your kids need it, your, you need it. You need to be part of that. Let me tell you where we're going with our worship services this year. We usually have one or two main themes that we cover or main books of the Bible. And this year, our book, the big book that's going to take a lot of the year is the book of Romans. The book of Romans, you know, the Bible is just filled with some of the most amazing literature in all of human history. And, and I believe it's more than that. It's the inspired word of God. So every book is powerful. Every book. But the book of Romans has probably had the biggest impact on the world of any book of the Bible. And I'll explain why next week. But we're going to start a study of it. I know that after I committed my life to Christ, within the first year to two years of my following Jesus, I started studying the book of Romans. And I did an extensive study. And I have to say that that laid a foundation in my life that I am so grateful for, that I've been able to build on over the years. And for some of you, it's going to build a new foundation. For others of you, it is going to strengthen your walk with God. It's going to be a powerful study. There's, there's really four main flows in the book of Romans, and we're going to cover three of them this year, and then we'll probably cover the, the fourth one uh, the following year. But I really want to encourage you and challenge you to be part of this series and take this study of the book of Romans seriously. Now, we'll be doing other things. We plan to do a marriage series along the way this year, but, and some other things we're doing, but that is going to be the, the main focus this year. You know, another part of our worship that we see here is just our prayer ministry because Radiant Church takes the words of Jesus seriously, and we have decided to be a house of prayer. And I want to thank so much our Exodus 17 ministry. How many of you are part of Exodus 17? You're actually part of that ministry. Uh, we have 175 people at Radiant Church who are part of our Exodus 17 ministry. It is the backbone of everything we do here. Uh, prayer is so critically 
important. But these people are committed to intercession and prayer. A group of them get together every Tuesday night at one of our campuses and begin to call out to God. And and we have powerful times of prayer. We have a monthly prayer vigil that's 24 hours every single month. Uh, We have... um, ongoing prayer in so many ways. And one of the most important prayer meetings we have every month is First Wednesday Fusion. It's a combination of passionate worship and fervent prayer. But those are such powerful services that if you're missing out on them here at the Central Campus, I encourage you to be a part of them. They They are just such a great gathering of people just really pursuing God with all of their hearts. Now, After we begin the week in worship, then we need to belong together in a connect group. And Kelly's going to come and share with us about connecting. Well, once again, um, I want to continually throughout this message today go back to those four quadrants. And that is how we fulfill our mission and the vision God has given us. So once again, will you say it with me? Pastor Todd just covered the first one, worship. Connect, grow, and impact. Let's say it again. Worship, connect, grow, and impact. So we're going to be covering a lot here today in this Vision 2020 message because we want everyone to be clear on on where we're going, what we're doing, what God has called us to do, and how you can be a part. And throughout this message, the Holy Spirit, we have been praying that the Holy Spirit will prompt each one of us to know what our next steps are. So I want to ask you right now just to stop. And ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, show me what my next steps are throughout this message so that we can accomplish the mission and the vision that God's given us as a church family. We're so grateful and thankful for each one of you. And uh, as Pastor Todd said, the second quadrant, the second part is connect. And that is such an important part for, for every follower of Jesus Christ because There are are some blessings that you are going to miss out on. Some of the most powerful blessings in your life as a follower of Jesus, you will miss out on if you stay isolated and disconnected. It is so vitally important that you and I, each one of us, are connected in a smaller group, a smaller community of believers where we can know and be known, where we can pray for others, support one another, encourage one another. I'm telling you, I could not have survived the Christian, the Christian life, this life, if I had not been connected to and surrounded by a smaller group, a smaller inner circle of believers around me throughout my life who were there to encourage me when I was down who were there to inspire me and pray for me when I felt like giving up. Listen, every one of us needs that. Now, Pastor Todd just quoted or read Hebrews 10, 25 from the NIV, but when we move into this connect quadrant, I wanna read Hebrews 10, 25, the same passage from the Passion Translation. Listen to the way it puts it. It says, this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing because we need each other. We need each other. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, we need each other. Listen, we truly do. This is the word of God. God designed you and created you to need deeper fellowship with other followers of Jesus Christ. We need each other. And I think one of the, one of the great blessings of our day is also one of the greatest curses of our day, and that's technology. I think that we have been conditioned to have a relationship with a screen so much that most of society is missing out on those deeper connections and that face-to-face interaction with other believers. And you have got to know today one of the strategies of hell to kill, steal, and destroy you, according to Jesus in John 10, 10, One of the greatest strategies of the powers of darkness is to keep you isolated and disconnected. And friend, just coming to church and sitting in a a corporate gathering, a large corporate gathering like this, while it is powerful, it's, it's significant, it's important, it's not enough. 
Listen to the rest, the rest of that verse. It says, in fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate that day dawning, the day of the Lord's return. So the scripture mandates that we meet together weekly, but that that's not enough. We need to meet together even more frequently as we see the day of the Lord's return drawing near. Can I hear an amen this morning? Listen, we need each other. Ask Teresa Russell, who became a member of Radiant last year. She took her next steps, and she went through the ascent. She became a member. She became a committed part of a connect group. And Teresa had a very challenging year this last year. Her daughter, Jenna, is over here, and she's going to join me on the platform in a few moments. But um, Teresa had an extremely challenging year with her health last year. And she shared with me personally that she said, Kelly, I believe it was God's divine timing and his hand that brought me to Radiant at this time because he knew what I was going to face. God brought her to Radiant. She took her next steps. She got into a group and she was overwhelmed by the outpouring of love and support and prayer and encouragement that helped carry her through an extremely difficult and challenging year. And I want to share with you in Teresa's own words what she said. She said, I have been overwhelmed by the love and support of my church family. I have never experienced such an outpouring of love. And listen, if Teresa had stayed on the fringes and not taken the next steps of going through the ascent and getting connected in a connect group, Teresa would have missed out on this incredible outpouring of love and encouragement and prayer and support. We need each other. Every one of us needs to be part of a smaller group where we are experiencing biblical community. We truly are better together. So if you're not in a group right now, we, Pastor Todd and I cannot challenge you passionately enough. Get plugged into a group. Not only for you, but because God has placed gifts and talents and wisdom and abilities in you that need to be poured out into the body of Christ. I I love something that Billy Graham said, and this actually goes in the next quadrant, but I'll go ahead and share it. But Billy Graham said that a a, a person, that we've been, been created by God with two hands, one to receive with and the other to give with. Listen, if you're not connected to a a group of people where you can give and you can receive, you, you are missing out. So get connected today. If you need help with that, there's a table in the foyer today, or you can go to myradiantchurch.org and click on groups to register for a group. We have groups meeting um, all over uh, Colorado Springs, Woodland Park, on campus, off campus, different days of the week, different times, different topics. So just Get connected. And as Pastor Todd comes, I want to challenge you. If you have never gone through the Break Free Project, it begins this week. Listen, we plead with you. Jump in to Break Free. Get into a Break Free Connect group immediately. Because this is a ministry that has changed hundreds and hundreds of people's lives. And we are absolutely convinced that everybody needs break free. Amen? How many of you would give God praise for what he's done in your life through break free? Okay. Another one of the groups that is starting this year, and it really has become a ministry within and under our youth ministry, and that is a ministry to young adults. We've had a lot of, I mean, we have a fabulous youth ministry, and we've had a number of young people who decided instead of going off to college, and some of them do go to college here in this area, or instead of uh, going off somewhere for a job, they have stayed here in the community. And uh, we need ministry for them. So we have begun a group called Sub 30. For It's for 30, uh, under 30 years of age. And uh, it's, uh, we've had small groups for young people for a long time. But now this is going to be a, a special uh, group of small groups that are connected, and I encourage you, you saw it in your bulletin today, there's information about that if you're one of those young adults. Uh, Another group that we have that is so critical that meets on a regular basis, Pastor Joel talked about it, is the Ascent. And the Ascent is really a growth track. It, It teaches you about worship, connect, grow, and impact. And 
I want to encourage you about this grow aspect because it's so important. And that's our third quadrant. Uh, what I want to talk to you about in that is the importance we have in growing in our relationship with God, becoming passionate followers of Jesus Christ by growing. Let me read to you from the Phillips translation, Colossians 4.12, that you may become mature Christians, that is to become like Christ, and may fulfill God's will for you. And the ascent gives you the tools to grow as a follower of Christ. So if you've not been through the ascent, that is probably your next step. You need to get involved with that. But part of what the ascent does is it encourages you to get involved with Radiant Word, which is our Bible reading program that we use as a church. Now, if you already have a Bible reading program that you're consistent on, that's great. But we want you to engage in the Scripture. And I want to tell you one of the reasons that's so critically important. You see it from studies that have been done. In fact, there was a study recently done by the Center for Biblical Engagement. And this Center for Bible Engagement did an extensive study from all kinds of different parts, actually, of the world. And what they found is that it's so valuable that you get in the Word that if a Christian is not consistently in the Bible, they pretty much live like the rest of the world. And that, that's what the study found. Now, here's what they found, though, that if someone will engage seriously with the Scripture at least four days a week, here's what happens. They struggle less with loneliness. They're quicker to forgive. They live lives of greater integrity. They're much less likely to feel spiritually stagnant. It could be today, if you're feeling spiritually stagnant, you're not engaging enough with the Word of God. They become far more generous. They become far less likely to look at pornography. They are much more likely to share their faith with others. All those things simply by engaging consistently in the Word of God. And so I want to challenge you once again. Get into the Word. Now, one of the big spiritual thrusts or surges we have every year, twice a year, is our 21 days of prayer and fasting. And Kelly's going to share about that. First, everyone in the Word every day. Listen, I, four, four days a week isn't enough. Remember last week's message, we need to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. We need to pump ourselves full of the Word of God, the washing of the water of the Word. Amen. I get so excited about God's kingdom. <laughs> so the first, the first part of every year at Radiant Church, we believe it is high priority that we take the first part of the year to set aside time to, pr to pray and to fast, to fast food, to fast media, to fast something. So I want to challenge every one of you to seek the Lord and just ask him, say, Lord, what is it that you want me to sacrifice? What do you want me to fast, to put aside, so that I can focus more intently on you, on your word, in prayer, and in being able to hear your voice more clearly? So we want to challenge everyone to jump in. Tomorrow's the first day of the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, fasting is a spiritual discipline that the Lord Jesus himself instructed his disciples to engage in. And as a matter of fact, he even told the disciples, there are some breakthroughs that only happen when you fast and pray. So we want to challenge you in that. If you've never fasted before, if it's something that's new to you, then go online, go to the church website. We have resources available at 21days.radiantchurch.org. You can go and find more information on how to engage in a successful fast. Now, when you came in, how many of you, go ahead and hold this bookmark up. If you received this today, if you didn't, there are some um, at the entrances and at the Welcome Center, but we wanted to be sure and get this in each person's hand again at the first part of this year, and as we talk about Vision 2020, as we move into this 21 days of prayer and fasting, this is so important, church. Listen, if we will come together in unity around God's vision, we will see this come to pass for his glory and for his kingdom. So we, we are strongly pleading with you to jump into this and fully engage with us that for the next 21 days, if we can get every person at Radiant to fast, to pray, and listen, one of the best things you and I can fast is media. Media. Oh, we will have so much more time to seek the Lord when we cut, when we cut out media. 
Um, another thing I told Todd and the kids, I said, something I'm fasting again, I have to continually discipline myself to do this, is I am fasting negative thoughts. I am fasting unhealthy thoughts. And I know all of us could stand to do that too, right? But um, we want you to t- put this bookmark in, in a place where you will see it every day, maybe in your Bible, maybe in your prayer room, uh, but, but in a spot where every day you can pick this up and pray specifically through our radiant guiding vision. Pray that you will be a person who is relying on the Holy Spirit. Pray that we as a church will be a church that is relying on the Holy Spirit, his gifts operating through us, his fruit flowing through us. Come on. We, if we are all praying through this, friends, we will see this happen for the glory of God. So we ask you to do that with us. So worship, say it with me, worship, connect, grow. That's where we're at now. How do we grow spiritually? Or that's, that's the one we just covered. And the final one is impact. How do we make an impact? Well, the reality is this, you and I are called to be the church and make an impact, but we will not make an impact if we are not serving. And we need every single person here at every campus engaging in ministry somewhere. The reality is that God has placed gifts, talents, and abilities, and and passions inside of each and every one of us to accomplish a specific part of his vision and his mission in the local church. He has called you here because you have gifts, talents, and abilities in you placed by God that will make us more effective for his glory. We need every person serving in ministry. And I want to take this opportunity to honor a man of God, Frank Hunter, 12 12 years ago today, Frank Hunter stepped up and he began the security ministry at Radiant Church. Frank is right over here. The nine o'clock gave him a standing ovation. Come on, 11. We thank God for you, Frank Hunter. We thank God that you didn't just come to church and sit in a chair week after week. Aren't you thankful that Frank was willing to serve? He was willing to take the gifts and talents and abilities and passions that he had, and he developed an amazing security team at every one of our radiant campuses. Now, 12 years later, this 12 years to the day, this is his last day as the leader of the radiant security team, and he has raised up someone in his place. Is Josh in here today? Josh, if you're in here. He's out in the foyer. Josh Trusevitz is our new, the new leader of our security team. So uh, I, I want to say again, I am so grateful and thankful. I'm thankful, first of all, that Frank was willing to serve because, oh, did we ever need him to do what he has done. And I'm also thankful that Frank made sure he had someone else to ready to, ready to step in and take his place. And I'm thankful for Josh Trusevitz, that tr- Josh Trusevitz is willing to serve in that capacity, that same capacity. How many of you are thankful that we have an amazing security team here and at all of our campuses? And listen, there are things that every single one of you have been called and gifted specifically to do. And if you're not doing them, we are weaker. We are less than what we can be and what we should be. We need you. Sabrina Martinez recently shared her testimony about how she attended Radiant for several years and she never took her next steps. And she said one of the reasons is she was so intimidated by lies from the enemy. Lies that because of her past she couldn't do, she couldn't serve in ministry. Lies that she would, wasn't good enough to serve in ministry. But thank God, a year and a half ago, Sabrina broke through those lies and she stepped out. She took her next step. She went through the ascent. She met with Jenny Dunn and she said Jenny helped her to understand the strengths and the abilities that God had placed in her and she began serving in ministry. And today Sabrina serves in Rad Kids Ministry and in her very own words, she said, it has changed my life. 
She went from here as a Christian to soaring to here as a Christian because she was using the gifts, talents, and abilities God gave her. Billy Graham said a non-serving Christian is a contradiction, a hypocrite. Billy Graham said that. And friends, it's true. Listen, the body of Christ needs you. We need you. Be, be like Frank. Be like Josh. Be like Sabrina. Be like so many others who have said, I'm going to take the next steps. I'm going through the ascent, and I am going to serve to see God's kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven right here in Colorado Springs, right here through Radiant Church. We need you. All right. Now... I'm ready to get passionate. Oh, yeah. So get ready. For those of you on the front row, I'm sorry. When I get passionate, I spit. And I don't mean to. It just happens. So you may need a spit guard right up there. You can hold your Bible up. But I am so excited about this. So now I believe we are nearing the end of this message, but I believe we all need to put on our 2020 vision glasses so that we can see clearly what God is saying to us at Radiant Church right now in the year 2020. And God is telling us, Radiant Church, this is to be the year of invitation. This is the year that you and I step up to a whole new level in being radical inviters, inviting those on the outside to come in. Are you with me? I want to talk to you today about the power of the invite. All of us ended up in church somehow, some way, by some circumstance. But studies have revealed that 83% of people came to church because of a personal invite. Not because of slick marketing, not because of a mass mailing, not because of a big crusade or a special event. Those things are nice and, and they can contribute to that. But no, the, the, the number one reason people come to church is because someone invited them. The Billy Graham Association issued a statistic that says that the average Christian can tell you at least, at least seven unchurched people that they know and that they have a relationship with. So I know that's true for every one of us. You know at least seven people that are unchurched. And the Billy Graham Association also conducted a national survey and found that 82% of non-church people say they would come if someone would invite them. Did you hear me? Listen, friends, there are people all around you that are just waiting for an invitation. They don't even know it, but they are. They're waiting for an invitation. The power of the invite is so incredible. And that's why, that's exactly what Jesus did when he called the disciples. I mean, you think about it. You read the Gospels. What did he do? He invited them. He invited each one of them to come into his circle and follow him. In Matthew 4, 18 to 20, we have an incredible example from our Lord Jesus. It says that he was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two brothers. He saw Simon called, Andrew, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake because they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus shouted to them, and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and they followed him. And from that invitation, those two brothers went out and shook the world for the glory of God. That, my friends, is the power of an invite. John chapter 1 is filled with stories of the power of the invite. Look at all of the invites in just verses 35 to 51. In verse 35, we see John the Baptist invited Andrew and John to follow him as he prepared the way for the Messiah. Then in verse 39, Jesus shows up and Jesus invites them to follow him. In verses 41 and 42, Andrew invites Peter to come and see the Messiah. We know from Matthew 4, 19, Jesus invited the two brothers to come and follow him. In verse 43, Jesus invites Philip in verses 45 and 46, Philip invites Nathaniel, and, or, yeah, Nathaniel, and on and on and on and on it goes. The ripple effect of an invitation is simply amazing. Each person is networked to so many other people. We never know what God's plan is for a person when we invite them to church or invite them to meet Jesus. 
You see, the first 12 disciples were all given an invitation, not only by Jesus, because many of them met Jesus and followed him after someone else invited them. And because of those invites, the world and humanity has been eternally impacted. How many of you have been impacted by the gospel of Jesus Christ? By Jesus Christ. And the reason why is because of an invitation all the way back then. The great invite is the great commission, where Jesus commissions every one of his disciples to go and make disciples everywhere you go. What is he telling us to do, friends? He's saying, go and invite them in. Invite them in. Everyone, everywhere you go, invite them in, because you never know what's going to happen when you take the time to invite someone to Jesus. And last Easter, something amazing, something wonderful happened when uh, Todd and I and the kids went out in our neighborhood and we began, I think we brought chocolates, didn't we, Jenna? Did we bring chocolate Easter eggs or something? And we, we began to go through, oh no, that was the year before we left them on your porch. You brought them I last don't know. year too. It doesn't matter. Sorry. <laughs> But we went, we went out and we were inviting neighbors to come Easter weekend. And I am so thankful that this particular neighbor accepted our invitation and she came. And I've asked her to come and share her story of how a simple invite impacted her life. So give it up for Jenna today. So um, in, in the beginning, you know, when... A life-altering event happens. You don't know it at the time, but the, in, of that day, you remember all of the details. And of that day, I remember all of the details. I remember where I was standing. I remember what I was wearing. I remember how the sun felt that day. Um, so the simple gesture of an invite has served to be so much more than just that. The first time I attended Radiant, I cried. And I cried because I found home. Though I had been searching for a church on a weekend here and a weekend there, I had found through Radiant what I didn't know my soul was longing for, a much deeper connection with Jesus. Since then, that invite has provided hope when our family felt hopeless. It has been the creation of new habits through committed time each day in the Word. It has been deeply needed nourishment for my soul that only Christ Jesus can provide. It has been a gateway to make prayer and our family walk with the Lord a regular part of conversation. It has given us renewed foundation to stand on in the Lord's promises. It has given me sisterhood in Christ through Rad Moms, which I hold so very dear to my heart. It has also given us a profound sense of family that is unlike anything we have ever experienced. Our family has been in awe of the outpouring of love and support we have received from God through our family at Radiant. I'm convinced that casual invitation that day to church was nothing short of the Lord's divine timing. With all we have encountered in the last year, I don't know how we would have faced it without the refocus on God and his promises, the solid faith that we hold in him and our church family. Most importantly, that simple invitation has been a lifeline to the king, a redirect in life's course and a newfound focus on eternity. From the invited, I plead with you to extend an invitation to others, to open a door for others into God's mighty kingdom. You just might allow God to change a life through you. And just in between services, between the 9 o'clock service and this service, I was sitting there and praying and reading, and I just felt very convicted by the Holy Spirit to share this lyric with you um, from a song called Tell Somebody by Danny Gokey. I strongly encourage you to listen to it if you can. It says, if I lay dying and you had a cure, brother, would you help me? Sister, would you help me? Well, the world is dying. And there is a cure. There's a hope that's deep within us, and this I know for sure. We've got to tell somebody about Jesus. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish 
for people. Friends, if we are not fishing for people, if you and I are not fishing for people, inviting people everywhere we go, we're not really following Jesus. And we can come to church and we can read our Bible and all of those are wonderful things. We can even be a part of a connect group. But if we're not fishing for people, if we are not seeing people as Jesus sees them, as people who deeply need a relationship with Jesus Christ, and we are not casting that net, throwing out those invitations, everywhere we go, we cannot say we are truly following Jesus. Is anyone with me today? Now, this is something that God has been dealing very seriously with me about. And so often he deals with me and then he says, now you share it with the church, share it with the body. And so I want to remind you of last week's message talking about being spiritually shredded. The very last point was we've got to target the weak areas in our spiritual life. And I want to admit to you that my weakest area has been fishing for people. It has been stepping out of my comfort zone and inviting people everywhere I go just to come, just inviting them in to, to God's family and to God's house. Listen, God doesn't expect you to clean the fish. He just expects you to cast the line to throw the bait out there, to, to extend those holy invitations. He doesn't expect you to transform lives. No, he just expects you and me to give the invite. That's his job. But our job is so important. There are so many people all around you. God has placed you strategically right where you are, in the neighborhood you're in, the family you're in, the job you're in, the school you're in. He has placed you there strategically so that you would cast the net and you would throw out those invitations, inviting people to come in. It's so simple. You have just got to bust out of that comfort zone. And so um, the Lord has really been dealing with me about that. And something that happened recently is I was going to invite two total strangers just to come to church. Is it because, oh, well, you're the pastors and you just want the church to be full? Oh, no. God knows our hearts. We want his house to be full. Because we know this is a very dark, cold, harsh world that all of us are living in. And there are so many, there are hundreds of thousands of souls all around us that desperately need Jesus. They need the, they need the Lord Jesus. They need the comfort of the Holy Spirit. They need the body of Christ, the family of God. And it is up to you and me to reach out and invite them in. And so one day I was going to invite two total strangers and, and I went and introduced myself and I engaged in a conversation with them and quickly realized, oh boy, these people are really into some dark things and I leaned on my own understanding instead of trusting in the Lord with all my heart and I decided, oh, these people would not appreciate an invitation to come to church for me so I'm not going to invite them and I didn't and I walked away and the Holy Spirit pierced my heart with conviction. And the Holy Spirit began to deal with me, and, and these questions came up. Why didn't you invite them? And, and so I tried to reason with God. Well, God, you know, I just don't think they're ready, and I don't think they'd appreciate an invitation from me. And the Holy Spirit set me straight. And that day, he spoke to my spirit, and he said, Kelly, I never called you to pick and choose who's worthy of an invitation. I never, I never told you, you decide which ones you think you should invite and which ones you shouldn't. He said, you leave that up to me. He said, I have called you to cast the net, cast the line. Everywhere you go, invite people. And friends, that is put on those 2020 vision glasses. God is calling us at Radiant to be radical inviters. Turn to your neighbor and say, radical inviter. Point to your neighbor and say, radical inviter. Because God has called every one of us to become a radical inviter. And at the end of this service, we're going to give you an opportunity. If you say, well, I'm just too introverted. That's just not me. Get over it. <laughs> you know, I've had people come to me and say, well, I just don't have the same personality that you do. Believe it or not, you can talk to my dad and my mom. I used to be very introverted and shy. But you know what? Souls matter too much for me to stay introverted and shy. And if you're introverted and shy, God wants to set you free today. He wants you to rise above that. And you can through Jesus Christ who gives you strength because there are souls out there waiting to be invited. 
And yes, some of them will reject your invitation, but that's okay. God will still reward you for being obedient. Oh, come on, church. We have got to invite people everywhere we go. I am spitting so much right now. <laughs> that's when you know the anointing is strong. <laughs> But I, I, want to, I want to encourage you once again, as Pastor Todd comes to close, we've got to be radical inviters. So walk across the street, knock on the doors, invite them to coffee, invite them over, invite them to church. Look at this. We have stacks and stacks of these cards. These will fill heaven with souls because of the ripple effect of one invitation. You know, something we didn't tell you is, you know, I invited Jenna, but Jenna invited her mom, and her mom's Teresa who she jumped in and God has just ministered to her in profound ways. She invited, I invited Jenna, but Jenna invited her sister who was battling um, discouragement and, and she came and recommitted her life to Christ. She was baptized in our outdoor radiant, our fusion service last summer. And, and Lauren, her sister, invited her boyfriend then, who's now her husband, her fiance, and he came. And I'll never forget the Saturday night when I gave the invitation to commit your life to Christ and he raised his hand to commit his life to Christ. All because of one invitation, friends. And, and I know the ripple effect's going to go on and on and on and on. Listen, are you in? If you're in with us, stand to your feet right now and say, I'm in. I'm in. We are going to take this city. We are going to take the cities of Woodland Park and Colorado Springs for the kingdom of God, one invite at a time. Amen. Drop the mic. You can go ahead and be seated again. <laughs> oh, this pulpit's all wet. <laughs> you know, if you're, not, if, if you're not so introverted and shy like Kelly is, um, we, <laughs> we actually have a ministry that they go out, they knock doors, and I remember we talked about doing something like that, and it's like, that doesn't work today. Nobody wants solicitors. And, and they, these folks just went and did it. And they started a small group that goes out and do, does it. And they just ask people, can we pray with you? And they'll end up not only praying with them, but leading them to Christ. It's, it's exciting what God can do through our lives to reach other people. It's phenomenal. Now, of course, the invite is so powerful, but... We really want to make an impact in our city, and we've decided we're not going to reinvent the wheel, so we haven't tried to start all kinds of outreach ministries, but we've partnered with others uh, like uh, Springs Rescue Mission and uh, the Dream Center here in town, Crossfire Ministries, a whole bunch of others that we have partnered with. But we've said, well, what is, what is something we can do as a church to really make a difference at each one of our campuses? And what we landed on was schools. And we decided we are really going to reach out to schools. So James Marty has led the way, and we have connected in significant ways with seven different schools, schools around each one of our campuses. And we are doing ministry to those schools. We found it's very effective. It's a great way to make an impact in our city. If you're interested in that, you can actually contact James at weloveourschools at radiantchurch.org. And if you'll do that, James will get back with you and tell you how you can get involved in that. One other area I just want to touch on, because it's so important when it comes to impact, is that Jesus not only said we're going to reach our Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, but also the uh, uttermost parts of the earth. And a lot of the way we do that is connecting and partnering with other ministries. So that Radiant Church actually is in partnership and supporting 78 missionaries and missions organizations around the globe. And this year, we have an opportunity, like we periodically do, to take a short-term missions trip. And this one's significant. We're partnering in town with Biblica. They used to be the uh, International Bible Society, and they merged under Biblica. And uh, we're working. We actually have some members of Radiant that are part of the staff there at Biblica. But they are targeting Zimbabwe to bring the gospel and to bring Bibles in the language of people that don't have Bibles. And it's mainly young people who are at risk in Zimbabwe. And so we are, through our Missions Cafe project, we are raising support for these Bibles. And then we're going to send teams literally to Zimbabwe to work with our missionaries, Larry and Rhonda Smith there, and work with Biblica to actually distribute these Bibles to these young people at risk. So if you're interested in that, uh, you can contact Natasha Panariso, our missions director, at impact at radiantchurch.org. 
So those, those are some of the things going on at Radiant this year. Not everything, but a lot of the good things going on as we worship, connect, grow, and make an impact. Now, you should have received today a Next Step card. Let me tell you why Next Step is important, because today you need to take your next step. What is something that resonated with you today? I hope the invite resonated with everybody, but maybe there was something specific. Maybe you aren't one of those people that consistently, regularly come to worship, and you say, boy, I need to do that for me and my family. Or you say, uh, I need to be at that fusion service they talked about. Or, or maybe you said, I need to get in some kind of small group or in a ministry group because I need to connect. Or I've, I've not finished the ascent. I need, I need to go to the ascent. Or, or maybe it is that you say, I need to get into the Word every day. I need to be in the Word every day day. Or, or it could be that you're saying, this invite, I'm excited about it. That's, that's my next step. i got to really be intentional about reaching out. Well, whatever it may be, this next step card gives you an opportunity to make that kind of commitment today by simply checking one of the boxes and saying, this is how I'm going to do it. This, this is my commitment. This is what I'm going to do this year. This is my next step. Also, uh, there is a place where you can say, I'm all in on the prayer and fasting, and here's, I believe, how God is directing me to fast during these 21 days. But I want you to take this card and fill that out and drop it off with one of our ushers on the way out, and we're going to be praying over these cards and, and praying with you as you take your next step. But let's close today in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we're part of your church. And we do truly believe that the church is a hope for our nation and the hope for the world. And Lord, our nation needs help. (laughs) And God, we are thankful for how we can get involved, whether it be uh, in our work situation or through the political process. And, And Lord, I'm so grateful for those in our congregation that are involved in that. But Lord, we know that the problem is much deeper than that. It's really a spiritual problem. That we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And and Lord, We can see spiritual victory in every person's life today as we take that next step for you to make an impact in our world. And Father, I pray today that uh, people would make those decisions, would make those commitments, and through it we would grow and we would fulfill your will, your plan, and your purpose for our lives and for our church. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, thank you for uh, giving us this Sunday to just share these things with you. You know, next week we'll be back into the Scripture, uh, going verse by verse through the book of Romans. But this week is just that opportunity to share these things with you. And I'm hoping that every single person is going to engage in this in some way. But one thing we want to do before we leave, we'd like to do this in every service, is give you an opportunity, if you're away from God or don't know Christ, to give your life to Christ today. And so let's have heads bowed and eyes closed. And today, if that's you and you say, I'm not right with God or I'm away from God, can you pray for me, Pastor Todd? I just want to know who I'm praying for today. Just slip your hand up real high. See some hands going up. Lord, I pray for these precious people. I pray this week would be a special week for them, that you would reveal your love and your grace and your goodness to them. And even right now, Lord, I pray you would touch their heart deeply. And I'd like you to pray this with me. I'd like everybody to join with me in this prayer. Say, dear God, I know I've sinned, but I believe Jesus died for me. God, you raised him from the dead. And Jesus, I confess, your Lord, please be Lord of my life. Wash away my sin and give me the power to follow you. Amen. Now, if you pray to prayer like that, we're so excited for you. But you need to let somebody know. One way to do that is reach in front of you, grab one of our connection cards, fill out the part that says, I said yes to Jesus. And at the end of the service, uh, prayer teams are going to be here at the front. You can give them that card, let them pray with you. We have a gift we want to give you to help you in your walk with God. The hour's late. We've taken a lot of time today. So let's stand to our feet. And as we do, let's give those folks a big hand. Congratulations. We're excited for you. And I'm going to ask prayer teams to come here along the front. We're going to end with a song of worship and a time of prayer. So let's just lift our voices before we leave here this morning.
Thank you again for being here for our Vision 2020 message. It did go longer, but man, God has given us a big mission and vision, and isn't it exciting? So thankful to be able to do this together with other passionate followers of Jesus Christ. So if you need prayer today, get down here and let somebody pray with you. But I wanna ask, if you want special prayer, if you would say, I need that fire, I need that holy boldness, then get down here, come right down to the front, and I'm gonna go through and pray quickly for you because I believe that that same fire, as I lay hands on you and anoint you with oil, I believe God will anoint you and he will fill you with a fresh fire to be a radical inviter for him. And go ahead and, and let's just praise God for those who are coming down here right now, saying, I want to be a fisher of people. And uh, before you go, if you don't have invite cards, come on, church, let's take these cities for Jesus Christ. Come and get these invite cards and, and give them to people, extend those invitations. God bless you. Let's make an impact for God in 2020.